old people. September, November. The Frank Sinatra song, remember that? September song? These few precious days I'll spend with you. Let me paraphrase that so I don't break copyright law. When fall's climate changes, the trees to yellow-brown, there is not enough time to go around in foolish crime. There's a lot of old people who are crippled up, who stay in the house. I call them window peepers, like Peeping James. Jane and Peeping Tom who look out their windows. They don't really live in the 21st century. Their learning stopped in many cases sometime in the 1930s before World War II. Personally that's where my mother was stuck. She was stuck somewhere in 1939 in her mental abilities. That's not to say there weren't smart people in 1939. But then when you start getting into the 21st century, the entire idea for living changes. A whole new culture, a whole new civilization begins. This is why a lot of people have trouble with Islam. Arabesque. A R A B E S Q U E. Arabesque is not only a form of art design that's used in many countries. This is the Holy Quran that I'm going to show you right now. There is a story allegedly quoted by the prophet that said he who quotes the Quran in another language is a liar meaning that the Quran has to be learned in Arabic. The design on this book the copy of the Quran and I stress the word copy is arabesque design. There is also a ballet position, a ballet form, which is called arabesque. This is a copy of the Arabian Nights. It's a translation by Richard F. Burton. The design on this cover is arabesque. It's a special art form, a special art design. The reason I'm showing you this is because some people do not believe that the Arabian Nights are true stories. But there are many people in Arab countries and also throughout the world who believe that many of the things reported in the Arabian night stories are true, at least true in essence, with maybe a little exaggeration. Many of the people in the Arabian nights are superheroes. Many of the creatures in the Arabian nights are demons and dragons and Draco, and Reptilians. This is a book called Picture Yourself Legend Tripping, your complete guide to finding UFOs, monsters, ghosts, and urban legends in your own backyard. I'm showing you this book because in essence, Many of the holy books, 
Many of the fictional books, like the Arabian Nights, for example, are all about legend tripping. Many of them are allegories, symbols of the hero going on a hero quest, going on a vision quest, going on a journey to discover what's real and what isn't real. And don't believe for one second that this world is rigid, that this world is fixed. That's the whole story of civilization. How new ideas and new discoveries lead to whole changes in the way people look at their civilization and the way they conduct themselves in sociology and psychology. When I was younger, I never did read The Arabian Nights, but I did see motion pictures about Sinbad the Sailor and the Forty Thieves and, of course, Genie. Yeah, if you really experience life, you'll find out that reality is not fixed. This is my belief why a lot of old people go senile. Many old people go senile, in my belief anyway, is because they can't deal with the changes in the world. The changes in culture, pop culture. They're still stuck in a time when they were younger when they could experience the world without a fixed religious belief system or without a fixed interpretation of the way they think the world should really be. This is not Arabian coffee. But it certainly is a brand of coffee. And many of the Arabs do enjoy their coffee. This little video is really, for my purposes, an unbirthday video. It's an unbirthday video because I don't really have a birth certificate in the modern sense. I have what's called a birth registration, which serves the purpose of a birth certificate. I'll show you this birth registration certificate when I uh, post my next video. Trenton is a city in New Jersey. I'll have to write to the birth bureau in Trenton and get a copy of a real birth certificate. So like I said, to repeat myself, I'll show you what a birth registration certificate looks like in the next video. The reason there is crime, in my belief, the reason why there's crime is two important reasons, in my opinion. One, people are chronically lonely. That does not mean 
that I am chronically lonely. That means that many people around me do not know what to do with their freedom. The other reason there is crime is because people are hurt psychologically and physically. That's my belief that many people force themselves to go through their day in spite of the fact they're suffering from psychological trauma and physical pain. I do have both of them. I do have physical pain and I do have psychological trauma. I'll post a story if I can find the right documentation on what caused this trauma. It's more than one reason. That's also, in my opinion, what passes for masculinity. What passes for masculinity, instead of a childish little boy, is that if a male, if a man lives long enough, he accumulates a lot of psychological hurts, a lot of rejection, a lot of physical pain. And this presents the persona, the personality of many people who try to pass for being men. Just my opinion, though I think I have a lot of circumstantial evidence for it. A lot of good circumstantial evidence documented by behaviorism and as mentioned before in other videos that in spite of the fact that many people believe Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic psychoanalytical theories are obsolete. To me, many of his basic ideas are still valid, even though he did make some mistakes as can be proven anatomically and with behaviorism, they can be proven that Sigmund Freud did make some mistakes. But many of his basic ideas, to me, are still valid. And of course, I fall back on Wilhelm Reich and Carl Jung. That is where I get most of my ideas on morality, what is right and what is wrong. Because to me, to my ideas, and of course, you have every right to reject my ideas because they're no more valid than yours. To me, most of the holy books in the world are no more valid than the Arabian Nights stories. That's not to say that many of the holy books do not have truths because they do. That's not to say that many of the holy books are not historical because many parts of them are historical. And that's not to say that there aren't occult or deeply mystical truths that can be had by reading the holy books because there certainly are mystical ideas and deep occult concepts in many of the holy books. But then that can be said true of the Arabian Nights. Many of the stories in the Arabian Nights are believed by many people throughout the world as a truth. They even 
many people do throughout the world, get their concept of morality from the Arabian Nights. The design on this book is Arab arabesque. The design on this book was created because the Arab's holy book says as in the Bible, as in the Pentateuch, as in the Torah, thou shalt not make a graven image. And so in order to avoid making a copy of any living creature, an image, the Arabs resorted to a design pattern. The Europeans picked this up in Rococo and Baroque. So there are not only moral truths that can be had from other countries in the world, from other civilizations, maybe even off-planet. Other civilizations can provide us with art and entertainment and new concepts and ideas for our civilization and morality to progress maybe in a unity consciousness where we can abandon duality that's not to say that duality hasn't served its purpose, but there is a movement, a deeply Gnostic movement, to abandon duality and to reject the concept of good and evil as absolute, even though good and evil can exist as a concept but simply as an abstract idea. Thank you for watching this video. And I hope you found some entertainment. Have a good day.